Hey, welcome back to another episode of Collector's Corner, baby! I'm your host, Corey Smith, and I want to thank you for tuning in with me today. Oh, baby, we got a special one-topic episode coming at you today. Another one of my favorite movies, At Close Range. They shot him at close range. Oh, you know, that's right, starring uh, Sean Penn and Christopher Walken, plus appearances by all kinds of other 80s actors, and uh, man, this movie has a special place in my heart. Oh yeah, and I'll tell you why, because that was filmed in my hometown of Franklin, Tennessee. Yeah, that's right, man. This thing came around and was being filmed uh, when I was just, uh, I guess, seven, eight years old there. And in fact, there was a scene in the movie at one point when they were filming downtown in the little small town I lived in. Uh, parents took me down there to see some of the filming, uh, just being in the background crowd kind of deal. So anyway... And we got all kinds of pieces to show you from the collection. So let's just go ahead and jump up in this mug right now. Let's get it started. The original release. We're going to just double it up right here. Boom! We got the VHS and the Betamax. The battle will be legendary. If you're not familiar with the old video wars, you had the Betamax, you had the VHS. Betamax was at the end of its career, or end of its life. Uh, ended up just uh, being cycled out, uh, discontinued, unused, unwanted, disappeared. Even though the experts say the Betamax was actually a better quality than the VHS. But regardless, I don't mean shit now, because Betamax said, boop, see ya, you out. And uh, VHS is the winner. Vestron Video, one of the greatest, uh, and still putting out Blu-rays today, but one of the greatest VHS uh, companies, VHS manufacturers, distributors, labels, whatever you want to fucking call it, I don't know. Like father, like son, like hell. So right now, I just read you the mother freaking tagline. Like father, like son, like hell. Let's give you a breakdown of the movie real quick. Do, 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 do. Synopsis. Tell me about it, Stan. Yeah, so what you've got here, based on a true story from the late 70s, uh, the uh, Johnston Gang, Pennsylvania, Christopher Walken playing Bruce Johnson, uh, was a uh, crook, thief, uh, murderer, used to steal everything he could get his hands on, trucks, uh, tractors, anything like that, you know, he could turn around and sell. Breaking in, stealing jewelry and artwork, just all kinds of stuff. Uh, Sean Penn plays as a strange son. Finally grows up. He's turned 18. You know, he's uh, he's doing his thing. And then uh, old Pops here, old dad, shows up and is like, There's my baby boy. I hadn't seen you in like 10, 15 years, but there you are all grown up. Be another uh, one of my uh, one of my little cronies, cause I can trust you, cause you're my son. Uh, but then that takes a bad turn, cause then you know Sean Penn gets together with his buddies, and then uh, they start their own like mini gang within the gang. But they're kind of reckless, cause they're young and you know drinking and doing drugs and all kinds of stuff. Dad gets pissed. FBI starts snooping around. All kinds of hell starts breaking loose. I ain't even gonna give you the, uh, the give away the spoiler though for you if uh, anybody's ever seen this uh, movie right here. But there's old Sean Penn with the pistol. So anyway, let's move it on out of here. We got the two original releases. Uh, not long after that came the laser deer. Damn, bro, how'd you get so big? Oh yeah, there it is. That's the mother trucking laser. 
Oh, yeah, there you go. That's what we're talking about right there. So, laser disc, same cover. Boom, I forgot to feature that on the... Uh, oh, oh, yeah, there you go. Featuring the hit Live to Tell by Madonna, because Madonna and old Sean Penn, they were uh, dating at the time. And so whenever he took on this movie, it was a pet project of Sean Penn's. He heard about the story, read about the story, researched the story, and then decided to uh, buy the rights to it and uh, put together a movie. But anyway, he was dating Madonna. Rather do it with Madonna. And uh, so she wrote him this song, you know. Do, do, do. Oh, so kick ass song released for the movie. I mean, shit, I just mother So, why don't we jump right to it? There it is. Whoop, 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 Madonna, live to tell. There we go. Got the motherfucking record up in here. We got, not only do we have, oh, I can see you through the hole. Uh, not only do we have the original single from the movie, I also hook you up with a, uh, with an extra metal version. Uh, just in case you want to just throw that shit on in the background. Because basically the whole score for the movie is just bits and pieces of this instrumental cut up into little segments, you know, to give it atmosphere. Because, man, this is a hauntingly spooky kind of song. Or, you know, just sort of very melancholy. And, uh, I don't know, definitely fits this movie perfectly. So, yeah. Uh, good thing that Madonna and Sean Penn were doing their thing together uh, at the time because then, boom, she could hook him up with the great single uh, to go with it. And that shit really helped out, really took it to the next level. So, bam, if you have not heard Live to Tell, don't remember Live to Tell, not sure you're familiar with Live to Tell, boom, throw it on, listen to it, give it a shout. I want to hear that shit. Woo, 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 rolling through the movie. So anyway, boom, we got the soundtrack. So let's fast forward, boom. Oh my goodness, late, oh, I think 99, 2000, somewhere around there. It got an update, uh, it fell into the MGM movie time release. And so time for something new and improved. So any of my VHS fans out there that collect VHS, you obviously are very familiar with this. Slap the new logo on there because MGM bought out a bunch of the, uh, or all of them, I'm not sure, Vestron's uh, catalog. And so they took a lot of those old Vestron videos, started giving them a re-release under the MGM title. Get some new pictures on the back. Christopher Walken. Oh, so good. Oh, just, uh, you know, I did call more cowbell. I gotta have more cowbell. And you got Sean Penn and his girlfriend, Maris Stewart Masterson. Oh, great. From uh, Some Kind of Wonderful with Eric Stoltz. Great in that movie. Great in this one as well. So that was the update. But same time, 2000, DVDs had already started coming out. Look at that high definition. Bam! So you know they had to release this mother trucker on DVD. Part of the MGM uh, DVD lineup. Uh, boom, flip it over. There you go. You got the uh, Sean Penn, the Mary Stewart Masterson. Uh, creepy ass fucking uh, Christopher Walken. Uh, there he is holding a pistol. Uh, only special feature you get on here, theatrical trailer. Goose, you see a trailer? So just bare bones, no biggie, whatever. I mean, you know, back in these days, for especially for a low budget sort of, or a, you know, mid-level sort of movie like this, you know, they weren't keeping a bunch of extras. They weren't holding on to all the extra footage and sure as hell weren't making documentaries or uh, any of that kind of stuff. I mean, like I said, Pet Project, uh, Ended up bombing at the box office. Where is everybody? Oh, boo. It just fucking fell apart. Nobody went to see this movie. Only became a, sort of a cult classic, beloved classic once it hit the video stores and, uh, you know, and cable TV and all that stuff. 
Just call my cable guy. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Hear me playing them drums? We're marching on through this fucking video right now. So yeah, first DVD release. Uh, and boom, right here. You got out of 2010, a decade later. Do the updated DVD uh, with a new cover on here. Uh, so you got Sean Penn. Boom! Look at this! Kiefer Sutherland up on the cover. Yes, Kiefer Sutherland does make several appearances in this movie. He's part of uh, uh, Sean Penn's little uh, young punk gang. You know, the ones that are causing all this trouble and giving Christopher Walken a headache and like, oh damn, I should have never brought you in on the uh, fucking uh, all my dirty dealings and everything. Uh, but yeah, you had uh, in this movie, you not only did you have Kiefer Sutherland, you had Sean Penn's brother, Chris Penn, playing his brother in the movie. Uh, in fact, Sean and Chris Penn's real life mother plays their grandmother in the movie. So yeah, there's a bunch of uh, tie-ins. Sean Penn bringing everybody in on this project. Uh, but then part of the gang, you also had, uh, oh, whatever his little name is, played Evil Ed in Fright Night. Can't remember his real name in real life. Uh, you had him part of the gang. You, uh, you had, uh, Crispin Glover, <laughs> McFly. Oh, he's part of the gang. All these people are just, uh, part of this little gang. All these young Hollywood actors, you know, the Brat Packers and stuff. Sean Penn was buddies with all of them. So, you know, he's like, hey, I'll bring in my friends. They can play my friends in the movie and shit. We can just hang out in Franklin, Tennessee, have a good time for a couple months. Boy, it'll be great. Uh, let's jump ahead. Same year, actually jump sideways, 2010 again. Uh, now they're just pumping out DVDs like crazy. We got a split, a Sean Penn double feature, Colors, another excellent movie uh, about the uh, South Central Los Angeles, police versus the gangs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and we got the double feature on here using that same updated cover. Uh, here you go on that. And then let's jump ahead. Now we're jumping ahead. That was jumping sideways. This jumping ahead. One year, 2011. They take the uh, the double feature there. And then they slap it on with a couple of other movies. Blown Away, Killer Elite. Uh, not the greatest movies in the world, but not bad at all. Uh, you know, pretty good. Pretty good action adventure sort of movies. Uh, so there you go. And then... Oh my goodness, 2012, another year later. They just keep throwing these things out everywhere. There it is, the updated version. Now you got another Sean Penn movie, uh, State of Grace. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Have not seen it. Don't know nothing about it, but it had that close range on it, so I had to get that shit. I'll get around to you, State of Grace. Don't worry. You, uh, you up in my catalog. You on the list. Uh, you just got other shit in front of you. That's all good. Well... Maybe someday. Uh, so there you go, but right there, another double feature. And so yeah, they're just dumping out at close range every damn chance they can get, man. MGM's like, damn right, we need to get this thing out. Like, we need everybody to see this shit because they knew who how good it was. People up in MGM studios, they were like, oh, man, everybody needs to see at close range. Let's just get as many copies out there as we can. But we know now we are in the Blue Rage era. Blue Rage? What the hell am I even saying? Whoa, baby! My tongue is all tippity tied. In the Blu-ray era, as I was gonna say. Sure is good to be number one. So, of course, woo, we had to get us a Blu-ray, a Blu-ray. You know I needed that Blu-ray. Stop singing! Whatever, man. Just get me my shit and some high quality high. And so that's what we got here, man. The Twilight Time series. Uh, they are like a limited release, limited production, special edition sort of thing. Uh, and then when that close range came out on the D on the Blu-ray, you know I was gonna grab that sucker. There's Chris Penn. Uh, now we've got us. Uh, what do we got for special features? Commentary with the director. We got a trailer. So we got a few updated things here um, inside the sleeve we got a shot from the movies more still shots uh the river with the moonlight if you've ever seen this you know what's going down in that scene that's some crazy shit so there you go 
Got the original thing there on the little book. Another oh, fantastic scene right there, if you've ever seen it. And then it's got the making of, like the little write-up, how it came to be. Like I said, this was something that, uh, this was a story that uh, Sean Penn was uh, super interested in and he uh, really uh, sort of uh, took a shine to and uh, he needed to uh, get that shit on camera and get it on film. And so, yeah, too bad it uh, bombed at the box office. Anyway, uh, I still love it. Still holds a special place in my heart. A lot of people love it. It's a beloved cult movie. A fantastic, uh, sort of underrated Christopher Walken performance. I mean, he is dark in this. So, telling you what, if you are not familiar with that close range, you need to get up in that mug. See it as quick as you can. Just do it, son. Anyway. I'm glad you showing me another tongue flip, Betty Floop. Woo! I can't get these words up out my mouth. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned something. I hope you are interested in checking out At Close Range. I hope you like, subscribe, comment, and share. Pretty please, with sugar on top. I hope all those things come true. I hope you have the best day, and I hope to see you next week. Cause we're gonna do it all over again. Hey, baby!